All right, guys, what's up? It's Jack, and welcome back to another video. And previously, I have discussed that I would be putting up occasionally some videos that I think every uh, single gamer at least needs to be aware of because of some upcoming things or whatnot that kind of affect every single one of us. Case in point, an example would be uh, like the Spider-Man video that I did about how Sony plans to release it in three parts with 50 bucks a pop at a total of $150. So this is something that I'm going to talk about here that actually does affect all of us. Now, I'm just going to say right from the start that if you are happy where gaming is and where gaming is going, then absolutely this is something that will uh, not apply to you. And this is something that you will kind of kind of roll your eyes at if you decide to listen all the way through, which I will apologize ahead of time is probably going to be a little bit longer than your average video. But I think by the time we reach the end, I think you'll understand why. Now, this particular subject has two sides to it, right? Think of this subject as a coin and there's two sides of it. Number one uh, is the importance of physical media. And number two, it's because, uh, number two, the other factor is that uh, publishers for games already are thinking about increasing the prices of games anywhere from 80 to $100, okay? Now, where do I want to start with this? Now, earlier today, I saw a video made by Yong Ye yeah talking about this particular subject. There was even one part of the video that was mentioned to where uh, the boss of Capcom or whatever it is uh, basically said that games are not expensive enough, so to speak. And uh, obviously, over the years, we have seen that gaming companies are getting away with quite a lot, right? And and the thing is this, if we continue to let them get away with quite a lot, then uh, it's pretty much going to be something that will continue to go in a certain direction, which in which the destination may not be uh, good at all. Like, for instance, let me ask you a question, okay? Uh, now, this is uh, obviously subjective, which is why I'm asking you, and it depends on how you look at it, which is why this may or may not apply to you. However... Here's a good comparison. Now, if you believe that Call of Duty is a shell of its former self, or if you believe that Call of Duty is dying or has been dying for quite a while now, um, well, this is something that you can kind of compare it to, right? Because when it comes to gaming, and uh, it's very easy for publishers to milk something until there's nothing left. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Well, COD isn't dead. It's still making money. People are still playing it, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But when you look at it, COD is not the same anymore now, is it? It hasn't gotten any better, has it? There's been things implemented and put into the game and programmed into the game that have made the experience a hell of a lot less fun, despite the fact that the game is still managing to make money, uh, partially, obviously, by selling copies. And another, uh, another way is obviously the microtransactions. And this is kind of where I'm getting into where the publishers want to have their cake and eat it too. And what I mean by this is publishers of every and any company, uh, first of all, they want control, right? This is one of the reasons why they want to get rid of physical media because they want to be in control of what you are consuming, when you're consuming it, and they can take it away whenever you want. For instance, here's an analogy. Imagine you having paid for your car, right? You, you paid for it in full. You've got the pink slip. It is 100% yours, right? Now, obviously, under, you know, uh, uh, under what's going on today, as far as cars go, like if you own that car, you know, you could do what you want with it. You want to sell it. You want to spray paint it. You want you want to do whatever you want with it. You want to go here whenever you want to go, whatever it is. It is completely up to you, right? Uh, now, obviously, you have to you know, stay within the means of the law or anything. You don't want to do anything stupid. But yet, even at the same time, you, you can do that if you want, but just you're going to pay the price for it, obviously. But but you get the point, right? You can do whatever you want. Nobody can take the car away from you. You know, you can take that car and ride anywhere, wherever you want, access whenever you want. OK, well, imagine having to pay for that car. But at the same time, the person that you bought the car from, despite the fact that you paid it in full and have the pink slip or or the or the, you know, or the, the car company that you bought it from can still take it away from you, even though you paid it all in full and the pink slip is yours. That's basically the comparison or analogy to uh, not having the physical media anymore, media anymore and everything going all digital slowly but surely. And we're certainly certainly headed that in that direction, as well as the fact that uh, there's also subscription services, right? Now, I understand the importance of subscription services. I understand the convenience of subscription services. 
And uh, I do believe overall that Xbox is doing it the best. However, Xbox is also one of those guys that is going like pushing for all digital. They're pushing for AI technology. They're pushing for, uh, you know, physical media to be a thing of the past. And what this does is it allows them to fully control what you consume and when you consume it. So that way, if they want to take anything away, you got no choice, right? Or let's say you don't have an internet connection for a certain period of time for whatever reason, right? It could be any reason. It could be your internet connection company is just having trouble for a while. You're not able to play a game, whatever the deal is, because you don't have an internet connection, which is required for the most part as far as Xbox is concerned. Uh, if not, then you know it's pretty damn close to that. Uh, now... Uh, even when you buy physical games today, uh, you still need an internet connection to install them as far as Xbox is concerned, as far as I'm aware of. I haven't gotten a physical copy in a long ass time, but you guys get the deal, right? Because there and there's also an update probably as well uh, on release on day one and such and such. So. Um, and back in the day, you know, I, I'm sure some I think PlayStation 5 still does this, maybe. Uh, but I know PlayStation 4, which is one of the reasons why I still have it. You know, all you had to do was just get the disc install the di put the disc in your system and it installs wham bam and if you look at the the place if you're looking at the xbox 360 era and before you didn't have to install anything you just put in the disc and you're playing right so uh now uh obviously nostalgia and going to that midnight release you know back in the day was something that i enjoyed but this is uh this is something that you know, is a, is a minor thing compared to everything else that physical media has. I mean, but the thing is, ultimately, if you wanted to trade in that game or if you wanted to give that game to your friend or like, let's say you wanted to play that game uh, or, you know, take it with you somewhere else or something like that and, and, and play it and not needing an Internet connection and stuff like that, all you needed was your TV or monitor and or the system and the game itself. And you're good to go. Right. And of course, you can, you know, you could sell it and all that. Well, nowadays, you, with, with, with everything going all digital and everything else, it's like you can't do that. And, and the thing is, you're just, getting, you're just giving them permission to access the game, right? And it says it in the terms of service that, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's because a company doesn't exist anymore or because the, the, the company itself has decided to go in another direction or whatnot, guess what? It's like you don't have access to those games anymore. You know, it's like you paid full price for it, but they got taken away from you. You know, uh, because let's just be real here. There's there's no guarantees, right? There's only very, there's very few things in this life that are guaranteed. Uh, so when it comes to gaming, there's certainly not guarantees. So let's say Xbox decides after a few years to exit, right, uh, the, the gaming stratosphere, right? L like, let's just say they, you know, there was one point in time where they actually decided to almost do that. But but that was halted. You know, Phil Spencer's like, no, let me let me do this or whatnot or, or something along those lines. Uh, and, uh, and, and on top of that, Xbox really doesn't need, Microsoft does not need, you know, the Xbox division in order for them to survive and thrive, to be honest. You know, they were filthy rich before this became even a thing, right? So th they don't need it. And, they, and at one point they were asking themselves, like, why are, even, why are we even in gaming? Especially after the Xbox One era where they totally shot themselves in the foot. Uh, but, um, uh, but you guys get, get what I'm getting at here, right? So, uh, at the end of the day, gaming it, it has come a long way, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's something that a lot of uh, publishers are taking advantage of in a way that uh, that is starting to mimic, for instance, Call of Duty. And we all know how history repeats itself. Now, if Call of Duty, if you're happy with Call of Duty's state currently uh, in terms of the quality of the game, in terms of how the game is getting updated post-launch and how everything is, is going on with Call of Duty, the SBMM, the EOMM, all that other stuff and future things that will be implemented probably... If we keep going in this direction, then obviously you're probably happy with gaming and such. But um, but if you're not, and if you're seeing the difference of quality, then w we need to do what we can in order to preserve whatever is left of gaming. You know, kind of like protecting physical media and making sure that physical media uh, is something that doesn't die. You know, I, I understand that blockbuster video is gone. I mean, when you look at it this way, there are certain types of retailers right now that are starting to not sell physical copies of things anymore including you know i think dvds and blu-rays are one um as well as like some video games are getting taken down the shelf because nowadays again you still need that phys you still need an internet connection in order to install the game and you still gotta install the game so it's like a lot of people are like well why would i go and pick it up physically when i can just be at the convenience of my own home and that's one of the beautiful things about uh digital is you, it's, it's a really big convenience thing and when you're looking at subscription services, uh, it's also convenient because it's all, but it's all because it's all there. But there's two big limitations to that. Number one, as a 
uh, as someone who has paid for something all digital, if you if you're not subscribing to a service, but if you paid, uh, you know, for a digital version of a game, uh, unfortunately, you do not own that game, and you need to have an internet connection in order to play it, and that's just the way it works. Um, so, for instance, as far as I understand, let's say one of the games that I have installed in my system is not on game pass i'm a i'm subscribed to game pass right so if one of the games on game pass is not there anymore but it's still sub, it's still installed on, into my system i don't think it will play uh because it's not you know in game pass anymore so i the game basically has no use i have no access to that game because it's no longer in game pass which what i'm subscribed to see what i mean so uh now that's again that's understandable but what i'm telling you is that the same exact thing will happen if i were to for instance buy a game and then all of a sudden that game, whether it's old or whether it's because it wasn't popular or it would just got taken out of the store for whatever reason. Uh, so let's say that game was an Xbox 360 game that I just bought digitally at a good price because I love it or whatnot. And then if that were to get taken out of the store or whatnot, I, I may not have access to that game anymore. And, and again, if Xbox just decides to leave the gaming division, guess what? All that money that we have spent on digital games, right? Whether we got them at discount or not is irrelevant, but all that money that we spent to, to, to play those games whenever we want, so to speak, right? Uh, that's the thing. You can't you can't play games whenever you want when you have uh, when you have a digital version of a game because you either a need an internet connection uh, or b a subscription service or and or both, obviously. So it's not literally whenever you want. It's pretty damn close. But I know we're talking about hypothetical, and I know that we're all online nowadays. But let's just be real here. Uh, again. Like I said, there's no guarantees. So if there is a, like, let's say there's a massive solar flare and nobody has internet for a few months, right? Uh, because the solar flare kind of knocked everything out of whack, so to speak, right? Well, what are you going to do? You know, if you've got physical media, that's great. You can still play your games. But if you don't, you know, obviously on one on one hand, I believe that's that would be a good thing for humanity because I think a lot of this current generation of of, of, of younger folks can basically, you know, go outside a little bit more and communicate like they did the old fashioned way. And at the same time, it kind of reminds them th th of reality and it kind of tells them to not take things for granted, so to speak. Right. It, it gives them a little bit of a dose of reality. So those three months would be a hell of a thing for them to kind of learn firsthand, so to speak. I mean, hell, I didn't I mean, it wasn't until tragedy hit my life and to where my life started to change when I was like 10 years old to when I slowly started but surely appreciating the things in life that I never appreciated before because I had everything uh and then when that when those things got taken away guess what you start going through what we call the school of hard knocks and then you learn and then you learn to appreciate things and you and you start to uh you start to change as a person for the better right you become you become tougher mentally uh you 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 get a wake up call right and all of us at some point in time in our life can use a wake up call it's actually a positive thing uh, especially in the long run. It's a pain in the ass to go through. Yes, I agree, but it's a positive thing, right? But, um, and the thing is, games being developers thinking about charging, you know, 80 to to $100 per game is just the beginning. And uh, the thing is, when, when we blindly, or a lot of people, when they buy into that sort of thing, now obviously the price change is something that they are going to notice because when you start messing with people's pockets, no matter who they are, it's going to affect them, right? Uh, obviously, the rich people, even rich people, don't like paying, you know, extra money for something that they normally pay less from, right? It doesn't matter. I mean, there's um, there's a hotel, for instance, close to, decently close to where I live, that uh, recently opened up about a year or so ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, and uh, basically, this this place, when they opened, I don't know if they changed the price now, but when they opened, it was seven fifty a night to stay there. And I know doctors that make good money and they could afford it, but they certainly wouldn't pay that much to stay, you know, overnight at that hotel. You know what I'm saying? So uh, from a price perspective, that's something that I think it's going to affect them. But at the same time, it's going to push a lot of people towards subscribing to uh, some sort of you know, monthly subscription service, like for instance, an Xbox Game Pass. And the only reason, by the way, that I think Xbox Game Pass is doing it the best is two two reasons. Number one, they did it first. And number two, there's also day one releases on Game Pass, which is something that, for instance, Sony is not doing. And Nintendo is not, you know, taking advantage of it that way either. But as far as Nintendo goes, they are the only company to where you can fully, to this day, to my knowledge, I think maybe Sony too, but I'm not, I, I don't know. Uh, but they are the only company to where physical media truly matters, which is another reason why their prices never drop. 
right? Because you truly own what you pay for, right? Uh, used games that came out years ago are only five dollars less than what they were on release. So, and it just hit me when I when I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, of course, it's physical media that still matters. Now, can you still buy their games digitally? Yes, and that's the thing; it's an option. And you know what? Here's a funny thing: uh, Nintendo sells some of the like they, their sale their sales numbers in terms of the games that they sell are pretty damn high. Uh, especially when you look at certain games like Mario Karts or whatnot. I think I read somewhere that Mario Kart, one of the Mario Karts, sold 50 million copies, which is, you know, we think 20 million is impressive, and it is, but 50 million? Holy shit. You know, one of the reasons is because of the brand name, of course, and but but at the same time, it's like, you know, you can't underestimate something, you know, like that. And, and the thing is, uh, my big question is, why can't uh, they both coexist, right? Physical media copies as well as um digital right and the reason being is because they want to control things i think this is another reason why eomm or sbmm or whatnot or eomm right is going to be coming to single player games and that's what sony has patented right uh it doesn't mean that it's being implemented currently just because something's been patented doesn't mean it's being implemented currently but it is something that could come in the in the near future right uh and in other cases when something is patented is it is put in it's put into the game uh you know like the same year that has been patented. So um, now uh, it's con it's all about control and it's all about bottlenecking and trying to get and trying to control what we consume and when we consume it within the limits of what they provide. And this is where I look at every single company through the same lens in what they're doing. And it's like, yeah, so Sony is going in this direction, albeit slower than Microsoft. Microsoft is really like embracing that connection, obviously, uh, despite the fact that they are seemingly consumer consumer friendly and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, uh, if you've got no choice but to go in, in, in that direction, it's like, well, you know what? A, you know, the, f physical media is, is a big deal. And, and the thing is, like, um, you know, I want there to be traditional difficulty levels in games as well, instead of AI automatically adjusting the game for me. And that's another reason why they require you to have an Internet connection all the time. Because I think Microsoft is going to implement this as well to, with their games. Because it's easier and more convenient and they can just focus on putting in more time to developing a game in other aspects. As opposed to, hey, we've already got this that's going to do the difficulty for you. So it's like, yeah, you guys don't have to worry about putting in so much time into, you know, programming the game to have, you know, uh, predetermined difficulty levels and let it up to the player. No. Um, the big The big deal here is that they want to control... What you play, when you play, they want to watch you, which is why they require an internet connection and all that kind of stuff. And you're giving them permission with all the terms of service that you have to say yes to every single time you are playing a game, especially if it's a multiplayer game. And since every single game out there is going to pretty much require multiplayer in some way, shape or form or the internet in some way, shape or form in order for it to play right or in order for it to play, including single player games. Uh, which they're already doing, but when you're talking about like adjusting difficulty through AI or a patent that basically lets uh, the game implement EOMM in order to make it difficult on the fly or easy on the fly, depending on how you perform, well, there you go. We're we're, we're basically like, you know, uh, we're like test subjects, and at the same time, we're not in control. Games are going to start playing us. We're not going to be playing games anymore. It's all going to be in the control of their hands now obviously one of two things that we can do about this is to start talking about it now the sooner we talk about this now the better off we'll be in the long run because you know we need we need to legitimately push back against things like this or else gaming is no longer going to be a thing for a lot of us we're just going to be it, we're no longer going to be legitimately playing games anymore games are going to be playing us and again they are going to be having all the control and in my opinion that's not right if i own a car for instance i want to control I want 100% control when I'm in that car, right? If I choose to go this way or I choose to go that way or, you know, how I'm going to basically, uh, how I'm going to handle traffic and all that kind of stuff, you know, it shouldn't be like, oh my gosh, you are driving perfectly. You haven't gotten a ticket in your entire, uh, in, during the last decade or something like that. You know what? We're going to, we're going to change the traffic and we're going to make things harder because you haven't gotten a ticket, Right. Does that sound right to you? No, but that's the analogy that I'm giving you. That's exactly the direction that that we're going in right now, and we need to do something about it. Um, now, another thing you can do, obviously, other than consistently talking about it and trying to create pushback, is obviously to affect the pockets. Uh, that is something, because when, when, when it starts to affect the pockets in a negative way, that is the only time that you can see change. Uh, and of course, another thing that I am doing 
personally, um, as best I can at least, is uh, buying physical media of games, especially games that I missed, or even prior consoles uh, that I missed. So what am I talking about? So I still have a PS4. And very recently, uh, when I was at work during some downtime, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go to the GameStop website. I'm going to look at their pre-owned games at their titles and stuff like that. I'm going to make a list and put the price of the game next to that game on that list. And I am going to invest in buying those games. And lo and behold, because I've been playing one certain type of genre for the most part over the last decade, there was about, and, th and these are used prices except for maybe one or two, uh, there was about $500 worth of games that I wanted to get for the PS4. And when I looked at the list... I was like, holy crap, Jack, how in the world do you call yourself a gamer and you missed out on these games? You know, my excuse was that I was just too focused and too obsessed with Call of Duty at the time. That's it. And of course, with making YouTube videos. And obviously now that's not the case anymore. Uh, Call of Duty is no longer at the forefront. I'm a, I'm a fan of the upcoming X Defiant, and that's the kind of content that I'm going to make. But at the same time, I am not going to be just playing that game either. I, I enjoy single player games. I've played god knows how many hours of devil may cry over the last few weeks and a multitude of devil may cries i'm putting in more time into playing different games and i'm enjoying every single aspect of it right but i'm not going to be enjoying that if there's going to be eomm in my game anymore right or let's say it's a rainy day or there's a solar flare or no internet for whatever reason you know am i gonna be able to play those games no i'm gonna be sitting there with my thumb up my butt or I can plug in my PS4 <laughs> and play those games that I, you know, uh, you know, like I said, there's no guarantees, guys. There's no guarantees. And at the end of the day, you know, we want to control as much as what we purchase as much as possible. Right. Uh, that's the beauty of purchasing something. When you own it, you can do what you want with it. And that's changing because they want control and we shouldn't let them. So. Uh, so, yeah, I know this commentary went on for a very long time. Um, but it is something that I thought was very worth discussing. And uh, uh, I don't know, maybe perhaps once a week I'll make a video uh, like this, uh, doing a little bit in-depth conversations in terms of things that are important to all of us as far as gaming is concerned. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you like where gaming is going and if all of this stuff in terms of where the gaming industry is headed sounds good to you, then by all means, you know, you, you're probably going to disagree with pretty much everything that I said in this video. But if you're able to see between the lines and if you are uh, if you don't like where this is going and if you start and if you're starting to see the pattern here, then, you know, uh, whether you're a content creator or not, you need to do something in order to show these companies and these publishers more than anything that there is pushback when it comes to this. Right. Whether it's, uh, you know, for uh, physical media to survive or whether it's because you don't want EOMM or SBMM in your single player games. Uh, and everything else that I mentioned here and that you don't want games to be 80 to 100 bucks a pop. I mean, that's uh, even in this day and age, that is a lot. And, and, and let's not mention the fact that in those games, there's also going to be microtransactions. And if you look at Call of Duty, a game that is releasing a DLC, so to speak, in Modern Warfare 3 for a full $70, plus there's the same old bundles that are going on for like, you know, <laughs> varying prices, some of them lower, some of them higher. You get it right. Again, these guys want to have their cake and eat it too. And Call of Duty is at the forefront of setting the example because all these other publishers are seeing that Call of Duty is getting away with this. So guess what? They're going to want to do the same thing. You see what I'm saying here? This is another reason why Call of Duty copied Fortnite. But at the same time, not only did they copy Fortnite, but they went like completely Call of Duty mode, so to speak, right? And just completely like milked the shit out of it, right? Without any regard for uh for the fan base whatsoever you know which is actually the opposite of what fortnite does as far as i know fortnite still respects their audience which i tip my hat to them for um but you see what i'm saying here they want to have their cake and eat it too and do you think companies like microsoft even though they seem friendly and consumer friendly and everything like that do you think do you think they're going to say no to something like that has any company out there shown that they're not going to be greedy so far as far as i understand or, or, or like when you look at the percentage of greedy publishing, the publishers compared to non-greedy, I think, I think, uh, I think it's safe to say that a lot of them will milk the hell out of the cow until the division of whatever they're milking doesn't exist anymore. And the only way they're going to stop is if they stop making money, because that's the only language that they understand. So, uh, with that being said, I think I said everything that I wanted to say in this video, and I apologize for the video being so long. 
but it was one of those conversations that needed to be had and uh it is the direction that we're heading in um i'm gonna leave a link in the description below to young yeah's video so that way you guys can get even more details on that uh and in terms of what he said as well and uh when obviously i don't really need to leave any links or anything about when it comes to physical media uh i think we can all uh, know and understand the importance of uh of physical media and i think pretty much the majority of us agree that when we own something we shouldn't you know kind of like the analogy that i gave you earlier it's like i own my car i should be able to drive it whenever i want however i want you know obviously within <laughs> within the law of course uh you know uh, and have access to it whenever especially if i own it and have the pink slip or whatnot the company doesn't have the right to just take the car away despite the fact that it's paid for right they have no reason to be involved or to have any sort of control as to you know how many miles i use in a day or some shit like that you know what i mean so um but yeah that's pretty much all i've got to say guys again i apologize for this video being as long as it is but it was necessary. So with that being said, I would really like to know down in the comments section what you guys think and what uh, what you see, right? And your perspective uh, and, and what we can do about it, if anything at all. Uh, I've, given, I've given my thoughts of what we can do, but in terms of, uh, in terms of talking about it on YouTube, that's what I've done here. And of course, I made that list and I am looking forward to like literally buying all those physical copies of those games so that way if shit hits the fan i will have plenty of games to play and, and not just not necessarily just for youtube but just because i grew up loving gaming so uh and it's always been a hobby you know and i don't want that hobby to disappear simply because of uh of greed and because of you know the direction where things are going so if you want things to change, you have to start by speaking up about it and being consistent with it. And of course, affecting the pockets and as a backup plan, buy those physical media copies that you can still buy. And uh, with that being said, I hope Nintendo uh, does the right thing when it comes to the next console. But time will tell when we know official details. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for this one. Thanks again. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.